On Kelly's Island, well over 20 species of Odonata can be found. If you are wanting to find these insects, your best bet would be to start looking in May, but the peak of their season is during the months of June and July. You can actually find dragonflies all the way through to November. Different species of dragonflies will have their highest populations at different points in the year. For example, calico pennant dragonflies can be found abundantly in June and July, but are rare or impossible to find once we get into August. Another example is the common green darner. One of the largest dragonflies on the island, these voracious predators can be found easily between May and September. However, once the weather starts to change, these dragonflies will migrate, just like the famous monarch butterflies. It is not uncommon to see groups of over a thousand green darners traveling together and heading south for the winter. You can observe two major families of Odonata, dragonflies and damselflies. Details about the differences between these families will be found in the following video. Both families have a similar life cycle, which is quite interesting to learn about. First, many people do not know that once you see an adult dragonfly, they are nearing the end of their life. Much of their time as an adult is spent mating and reproducing the next generation. After mating occurs, Odonata will lay their eggs in the water. This can sometimes be observed. If you've ever seen a dragonfly keep hitting the top of the water, or look like it might have something wrong with it, or that it is having trouble flying, it is likely laying eggs. Depending on the species, they may lay their eggs on the open water, or they may lay them in the stem at the base of an aquatic plant. Water is important because when the larvae hatch, they are fully aquatic. They will eat and grow in the water, searching for smaller insects or organisms to eat. Chances are you have seen a dragonfly water before and just did not recognize it. The larvae look very different from the adults, as they are typically brown and have rounded bodies. Once they have matured fully in the water, it is time for their holometabolous metamorphosis, or complete metamorphosis, to occur. The larvae will crawl out of the water to a plant, grow their wings, and elongate their bodies. When they emerge from their exoskeleton, called an exuve, they will be the recognizable odonata that we see flying in the sky. It does take a bit of time for the newly emerged dragonfly to harden and be ready to face the world at full speed. Often the adults emerge in the morning, where they will have plenty of time to dry out. Dragonflies and damselflies are carnivorous and will go after anything that they can catch and eat, including each other. This makes them a high order, higher order consumer than most insects. They can typically be classified as a secondary consumers when they eat insects that feed on grasses or plant matter, like moths. But if they consume another dragonfly or damselfly, they would be considered a tertiary consumer. So today's video is on odonates, uh, so dragonflies and damselflies, and we have a comparison right here of both. On the left is a damselfly, on the right is a dragonfly. Um, on the left is an eastern forktail, and then on the right is an eastern pond hawk. Um, some common differences between them is Generally, uh, dragonflies tend to be bigger. The sizes can overlap, but the size usually favors uh, dragonflies and being bigger. And then we can go into when they're perched on something. Uh, typically, damselflies will fold their wings back, whereas dragonflies lay with their wings flat like an airplane. So here we have a male blue dasher, uh, another type of dragonfly. Uh, a similar dragonfly species that we get on the island is called an eastern pond hawk. But if you see that black tip on the tail, they both look really similar to each other. Except for that black tip on the tail, blue dashers have that black tip where eastern pond hawks will be uh, almost that all blue like that and white at the tip too. There you go, you can see the nice black tip on the tail. And plus, the diff a good difference between the pond hawk and the blue dasher is the blue dasher has that orangish tint to the wings too. 
so from earlier I caught the blue dasher over at the honey beady preserve and now I finally got both of them in hand eastern pond duck and blue dasher that both can be look pretty similar when you don't have them in the hand um, once again the you can see that color in the wing on the blue dasher um, and then this pond hawk it's actually still kind of a younger one because it doesn't have that full white on the tip on the tail but you can see uh, in the face see the face there of the blue dasher is white and on the pond hawk is actually green so this here is the eastern pond hawk that I was talking about earlier the female actually looks almost completely opposite all green with some black back here um, and the young males actually up here towards the abdomen actually have a um, kind of what's called in the book it's called a green jacket is what they wear so that's kind of the difference between the ages So here we have two calico pennants, one male and one female. The male is on the left, female on the right. Um, very similar looking except for the colors. The male is more of a bright red where the female is more of an orange. So here we have a wandering glider. Um, We've just started seeing these for the year. They have a uh, kind of an all goldish color overall. And depending on the time of the year, the summertime, you'll get different dragonflies and damselflies that'll come out throughout the summer. This is a ruby meadowhawk. And you can tell that because of their patterning on the sides of their thorax, um, as well as their bright red color. Um, you can tell that it's a metal hawk based on the size. As you can tell, they're a smaller dragonfly. Um, and they're distinguishable from an autumn meadow hawk um, based on their legs. That's a good identifier is the bottoms of their legs are black instead of yellow. So here is one of probably one of my favorite dragonflies we get here on the island. It's called a Halloween pennant. You can really notice it when, hopefully if it stays when I uh, set it down. When it opens up a lot of bold spots on the wings and some really bright orange. We'll see if he stays. Alright, so one of our biggest dragonflies that we get on the island uh, common green darner this is an adult male and one of the best ways to tell is the blue down here and then you get the green up here towards the top of the body and then another way to tell is right uh, in front of the eyes there there's that black little dot that tells you that this is separates it from uh, some others like comet darners Ha, ha, ha.